Thank you very much. I am Marco. Uh, this this work was actually supported by by Reverse Security, who were the owners of, of uh, Hummingbird 2. Uh, that company is no longer. It, it went bankrupt uh, <coughs> sometime last August. So I'm 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 here. Um, Well, this one doesn't work. So I'm, I'm just uh, supported by by the current intellectual property owners of, uh, of Hummingbird. I don't even know who those people are. So anyway, <laughs> some gentleman in, in Texas uh, sponsored my, my trip. <coughs> um, did I just switch this over? So, Hummingbird 2, which was, uh, which is a uh, successor to Hummingbird 1, obviously, came out in uh, two years ago. So, it, it, it's a lightweight authenticated encryption organ for, <coughs> which was actually designed in, uh, in uh, to work together with a, with a specific RFI authentication protocol. So, it, it, for example, in ISO standardization forms, these two have been proposed together, so it's a, it's a, it's it has been designed for a very specific purpose. So uh, so it should really be looked at in that context. For example, in this protocol, it's only run in encryption mode. So because the protocol is used for authentication, encryption is not even needed. But we, uh, anyway, we actually evaluated it in in the context of a general authenticated lightweight authenticated encryption algorithm. So you don't. Really have to care about that. But anyway, it's a, it's a, it, it has a 128 bit secret key, and obviously that's also the security claim, and a 64 bit IV. Uh, and you know, there was a, a, in the previous talk, the, the, the non reuse issue was mentioned, and because of the, of the way this particular cipher is being used, it's unavoidable because the, because the IV actually comes from the interrogate importing, so you can avoid. Uh, the other party giving you the same IV twice, so it's supposed to be actually resistant to repeated IV attacks. And this is actually a repeated IV attack, so it's not a nonce. Uh, yeah, and uh, so I was involved actually in the, in the design of this cipher. So we we were only allowed to do minimal changes. So this was uh, partially because of intellectual property issues. You know, the uh, Hummingbird one was patented, so. Same patterns had to apply to Hummingbird 2 too. So it's like we were, <laughs> our hands were a little bit tight there. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, because uh, Hummingbird bond was uh, quite seriously broken. So uh, it, it had a 256 bit secret key, which was obviously too large. Uh, and you could cut down that into, into two to 64 bit single key attack. So it was quite devastating. Uh, and I'm, I'm not aware of any other attacks against full hummingbird too. So there, there's been some e-print things, but uh, those have been mostly actually withdrawn. So uh, uh, there, there was one claiming uh, a two to thirty-six attack. So I emailed the authors and saying that surely enough you implemented this and it must work like within a minute because it's two to thirty-six and. There was an email back uh, one week later saying, "No, we haven't uh, implemented it, and they they just read through the papers." So, <laughs> so stop. Uh, there's actually been quite a few e-prints like that, and none of these attacks are valid. So uh, there you go. So the architecture is uh, is based on 16-bit data paths. So the Target was uh, really ultra lightweight uh, microcontrollers and hardware implementation, it, and uh, more specifically, Texas Instruments MSP430 family, which has a which has 16 bit words and uh, 16 general purpose registers. So uh, this design works fairly well with that particular ultra lightweight uh, in CU. Uh, the cipher has almost no key schedule, so we have we split the the key into eight 16-bit words, so I'm, I'm using this notation later on in the talk. 
And there's only one nonlinear component. It's called uh, WD16. This was uh, named uh, by our marketing department after our mascot, Pit Diffy. So <laughs> supposedly he designed this uh, on, a, on a cocktail napkin somewhere. You know, so it's, anyway, they, they like to play that it's actually a designed by Pit Diffy, but in, in real life, obviously it's not. Uh, so we have uh, WD60, which takes in uh, six, uh, 64 bits, and these 64 bits are either the upper half or the later half uh, of the of the one trillion bit key, always in this design. So uh, WD60 can be viewed as a, like a mini mini block cipher with a 16 bit uh, plain text coming in and a and a, and a word coming out. So we make. A very simple observation. This is actually something which was inspired by one of the bit thrown e prints by Kai Zhang, Ling Ding, and Qi uh, Guan from China. And uh, they, they had a valid uh, related key observation on, on uh, WD60, but they apparently failed to turn that into an actual working attack. So that's the thing. So here we have the the structure of WD16. So uh, there's four arms. There's uh, four by four S boxes here. Uh, each one of these are the same. There's four different S boxes here. And there's like a linear mixing mixing phase here. Uh, and it's keyed by 64 bits. So there's like uh, four sub keys going in here. So it's it's a, it's a fairly simple simple thing. Uh, so zooming up to the first round. Uh, we, we can see exactly how it happens, uh, how it works. And if you if you have a have a simple related key here, like uh, like uh, inverting the high highmost nibble here, only one S box is obviously activated. Then we have linear mixing after that, and quite obviously, if you, if, uh, with, with a certain probability, we can cancel it out uh, if a related key at all. Uh, because these are four by four S boxes. Uh, you always have at least, uh, you know, differentials uh, with probability one over four. Actually, if it's a good S-box like these are, uh, all of the differentials are one over four. Um, right. So we we observe here that we have 64 bit related keys, you know, for these these uh, WD 16 instances that actually produce the same that same output for these two related keys with probably the one over four because uh, because the sub keys are only used once here. So that's one word, that's one word, that's one word. Uh, so and one should also note that if if this difference is actually coming from up here, from, from the plain text side, then we also have uh, two plain text which actually produce same Output under related key with a high high probability, so we can have basically collisions in WD60 easily as well. The high probability. Yeah. I'm using both of these trivial properties in the attack, which is actually quite simple. Uh, oh, oh yeah, and I should note also that actually the the hummingbird one attack uh, worked against any WD. WD uh, 16 type function, so that was uh, totally irrelevant to the attack. Uh, typically, it's, uh, I claim that it's 2 to 64 because that's the general case, just based on the on the structure of Hummingbird 1. But if you look more deeply in, into the actual contents of uh, WD16, you could easily push that down to like 2 to 32 very realistic values against Hummingbird 1. Now, now if we go to the Structure that that was WD16. Now we look at the uh, data paths, which are 60, uh, 16 bits. So first we have a sort of a key setup uh, phase. So we have four rounds like this, where we start with the IV value here twice, and we run run some uh, addition additions and rotations and XORs to sort of mix it up into a 24 uh, 128 bit state. You know that's that's the IV setup phase. They say counter here, and uh, and and really the keys are used here 
twice. So here we use subkeys from 1 to 4, 1 to 4 again, 5 to 8, and 5 to 8 again. So uh, because, uh, the, because the key schedule is so silly, we, uh, we actually know that there are related keys that we do uh, with uh, 1 over uh, 65,000 actually produce the same IV values after four rounds, rounds because you know they, if we have a related key collision here, these sub keys are the same, and here again, then it's well th th that's where it happens. Really. Uh, the number of uh, related keys or the related key family is simply that uh, that is the highest probability related key family. There are others, you know, a bit lower probability, but still perfectly realistic in our data. In so I'm I'm just focusing on the on the easiest related key families. So because uh, th that's one thing that I am thoroughly put into the paper is that because these related key families are so large, you can actually hit them by chance in a in an RFID setting, and especially if. If the RFID has something like a like a master key, or if the if the private keys are derived from like serial numbers which happen in key log, if if there's uh, issues of that nature that they that the secret keys aren't entirely uh, random, that they are like derived from something, you have a fair chance of actually hitting uh, hitting related keys if you have a big file of RFID tokens, quite uh, uh, better parameters actually finding a pair which have. Uh, this relation by chance, and and in a related key, you you can obviously then derive the master key from from by using those that that pair. So it, it's it's fairly realistic. Uh, and one should also think about the sort of <laughs> vegan versions of these because uh, then it gets totally silly. It's, it's uh, they are easily easily breakable, and those do exist. Uh, right. Uh, now, now the encryption part. Uh, so, uh, Hummingbird isn't isn't like a like a stream cipher or exactly like a block cipher. Uh, and because of the requirement of um, even even for, for the very first bird to be resistant against uh, the attacks, unlike in like duplex mode or, or similar modes, we have to uh, run a permutation on each plain text bird. Uh, to pr produce the each ciphertext print. We, we cannot just sort that with the state and, and then mix up the state or something like that. So uh, we have a, that's the encryption pipeline. And then there's mixing with the state words here. These are additions. And there's, there's also some variable keying. These last four state words are actually used to key the middle, middle row, rounds here. Otherwise the attack would be totally trivial. Uh, like in Hummingbird 1. But anyway, uh, because these keywords are SOAR, and the related key family is based on SOAR, that doesn't really matter. Uh, if we have K, K1 to K4, again here, that's, that's 5 to 8, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we have uh, one to only have uh, this 1 over 4 probably we have it twice, and we get the same ciphertext. So uh, we, we observe that. Uh, th there's, a, there's a very high probability, 1 over 16, that if, uh, if the state matches, if we run the IV setup, uh, find, find, a, find an IV value which uh, produce, uh, produces a collision in, in the state after IV setup, then we have a very high probability that these two related keys will actually produce matching ciphertext. And that's obviously quite easy to test because we are allowed this uh, repeat, uh, repeated uh, non attack type of model. Right. So uh, coming to the actual key recovery. So I just arbitrarily pick one, one key relation that I'm using here. So we, we have two black box, let's say, RFID tokens, and we are issuing queries there. Uh, and uh, they are related by this. And obviously the task is to uh, figure out K. So based on these very basic observations, you can actually turn this, uh, develop all kinds of attacks. But this is the one I, I implemented and uh, ran successfully. So th that's the variant I'm, I'm describing to you. Right. 
So the, the first step in the, in the attack is obviously to find an IV value. We only need one IV value, which uh, produces a, a state collision after the initial uh, init phase for these two keys. And uh, we've all already seen that it's, it's very easy to do. It's like 2 to 16 effort, and, and we, we have such an IV value. Uh, and it's easy to detect because, because we, we get matching matching uh, ciphertext for, for some, some plain text for these two, uh, two keys. Now, recall the encryption uh, routine here. We zoom up. There's a the first attack, actually the, the very first uh, word of the internal state, and that's done by uh, by analyzing the interplay of this addition, the very first addition of of the uh, register word one to the play uh, to the plain text word, uh, which is uh, it's uh, by the way in the diagrams and, and in the equations I'm using the same variable name, so that, that's temporary variable zero, and then. Uh, then it goes into WD16, and they, where we have a XOR between um, between the, the keywords and and, and the thing and, um, uh, and, and the and the plain text word within WD16. So it's all based on really on on interplay because we can choose plain text P1 here. We don't know this one, but we know what what happens in here. So we are basically trying to. Uh, Create a coalition here. We have a we use a pair of plate experts which we can choose for the, for the for the two black boxes, and with certain probability we get a coalition after after the very first WP16 invocation, and that tells us about the about the state of uh, of the first register word here. It's just based on on carry, carry bits and, and 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 the particular. Characteristics of of the S box uh, that, that that's in there. So there's some technicalities here, but it's really really has to do with characters and, and, and the way the S box have been selected. You can you can build a table like this for for any any S box. Now, after after you have uh, after you have uh, the value of R one. Uh, in, in like uh, two consecutive uh, plain text positions, you can see that uh, it only changes by this addition, for example, here. So by subtracting those from each other, we, we obtain an internal quantity here. So it's uh, after that, after you you have one of the internal state variables, just because it's based on these additions and things, you can actually work out. Uh, <laughs> Uh, with fairly basic algebra, just turning the equations around, simplifying them. Uh, it's like first grade algebra. You can you can work out much of the rest of the internal state. So uh, that's all in, I believe, in section 3.3. So uh, because this is a because we can repeat the same same IV value, you can just rewind back the cipher, do do stuff again, try different things, actually build full code books. Full uh, uh, two to sixteen code books for certain position and, and uh, analyze those for for more information. But anyway, so after that exercise, uh, we have two internal quantities t one and t zero at some position. So that's t one, t zero, and t one. We know these values, and we know that only only sixty four bits goes in here. So that allows us to basically break uh, break the cipher in half. So because we have these values and uh, in, uh, we are brute forcing WD16 instances, we don't have to worry about the other half of the of the of the secret key. So that that already gives us a two to sixty-four attack. <coughs> so, uh, at, so first we attack, uh, attack uh, this half. Obviously, then the second half is a is a matter of brute force, and uh, the whole complexity of attack is is uh, 2 to 64. Then uh, one, one can see that actually having equations like that allows this to be split in half because uh, each one of these keywords is only used once uh, in the in, in the WD16 so you can do a memory time memory trade-off attack for this against this space. 
Uh, so actually, uh, attacking the first half of the secret key can be shrunk down to something like 2 to 36. But uh, if you do that, I haven't figured out a way of doing that to the second half. So, uh, so that brute force phase of the second half of the key dominates and uh, the overall complexity is still 2 to 36. But again, that's, that's the case if, if, if we have this particular uh, relation. So if the relation, because the relation can be actually in any one of these positions, you know, this uh, difference is cancelled by this. So we could shift this, for example, one, one position, one word position right, and it would still, st still be a perfectly valid relation. And, and the, uh, and I, I do actually believe, I haven't fully worked it out, but uh, then, uh, there's probably a, a way of, of doing a time memory trade-off on, on both halves. So, so the, the under related key model, the, the security of the whole thing goes down to like 2 to 32. That's, that's very much true if we are uh, in, a, in, a, in a crazy attack model where we have multiple uh, relations. I mean, I've, I've seen that being proposed. If we have like 32 uh, related pairs somehow, then you can definitely get, get to the, the common secret uh, in the 2 to 32 effort. So uh, in the paper, uh, uh, in the appendix, I was asked to uh, sort of propose an alternative to WD16, which is obviously the, the weak link here. I wasn't allowed to touch any other part of the cipher, which is pretty bad because I know that it's, it's um, it, ha it has features that I don't I don't really really support myself. Anyway, in the, in the appendix of the paper, there's a um, <coughs> version called or Hummingbird 2 new. Uh, they are replaced the S boxes with uh, key functions. We, we, we love these key functions nowadays because, uh, well, for example, S boxes are sometimes vulnerable to uh, cache uh, side channel attacks and, and things like that, which it don't really apply to guide functions. These are something that are present in k uh and um, are rotation independent. So it's, it's just based on these two involutions and, and a bunch of constants. Uh, the hardware implementation is actually smaller than, uh, than with Hummingbird 2. <coughs> the software implementation I wrote for MSP430 isn't that impressive, but, but can you do it? Uh, MSP430 only has one bit rotations right or left, and here I'm rotating like uh, crazy amounts. So. Uh, that's one of the reasons, and that's the, like the, the, the innermost border of the thing. Um, so uh, you are welcome to try it out. I know that uh, there might be some attacks, and even even related key attack. This isn't fully fully resistant to related key attacks because I couldn't change the key schedule. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Just a just a little challenge. Anyway, so thank you. So hummingbirds are like uh, regular birds. They just I'm alone in the lyrics. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a question or a comment? So I have a question. So have you tried to apply other related key type of attack, for example, related key boomerang attack, related key attack? Sorry, related key boomerang or related key boomerang? Not necessary because this was so trivial. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. I like simple things. So, any other questions or comment? Okay, let's thanks again. Okay.